chapter 10, section 10.1, we'll look at the assumptions of the kinetic molecular theory, define an ideal gas, and tell the difference between an ideal and a real gas. So the kinetic molecular theory is based on the idea that particles are always in motion. This is true for solids, liquids, and gases. So the word kinetic means motion. And regardless of what phase the matter is in, it is constantly moving. Solids move like in vibrational or rotational ways. Liquids move in a more fluid manner around one another. And gases move rapidly and can spread to fill any container. Uh, the kinetic molecular theory has several assumptions. We'll start with the first one, gases consist of large numbers of tiny particles that are far apart relative to their size. And what this means is that gases are mostly made up of empty space. Therefore, they have a lower density compared to liquids and solids and gases are easily compressed. So for example, if we look at this animation, we can see that right now it's decompressing the gas and so the gases have all this empty space between them. However, this allows for us to compress the gas or make the volume less. And so by giving it less volume, the gases are compressed together with little less space to move around. Therefore, we've increased the pressure on the gas. The kinetic molecular theory has several other assumptions. Assumption number two, gases consist of molecules in constant random motion. Three, pressure arises from collisions with the container walls. They have what's called elastic collisions, which means no net loss of kinetic energy. And number four, there are no attractive or repulsive forces between molecules and collisions are elastic. This is only true for ideal gases because a real gas actually does have attractive and repulsive forces between them. So if we look at our animation, you can follow one gas molecule in, in particular and as it moves around the container, we'll notice that it collides with the walls of the container and with other molecules. These are elastic collisions because there's no net loss of kinetic energy. Meaning, if it hits a particle that's moving slow, it moves slower, but if it starts hitting particles that are moving faster, then they'll transfer the kinetic energy and it'll start moving faster, like it is right now. The pressure arises when the particles collide with the walls of the container. They exert a force against the walls of the container known as pressure. Average kinetic energy depends on temperature. At the same temperature, all gases have the same kinetic energy. However, individual gas particles may have different speeds. And so we'll look at a diagram which represents this. If you have a heavier gas, it's going to move at a slower speed. If you have a lighter gas, it's going to move at a faster speed. But notice that the temperature in both scenarios is the same, 300 Kelvin. Same for this side, 300 Kelvin. So they both have the same temperature, which means they have equal kinetic energy, but they do not have the same speed because of the mass of the gases affects their speed. The effects of temperature on kinetic energy, as you decrease the temperature, it's going to decrease the speed of the molecules. So you'll notice in this container, the molecules are moving much slower than they are in the container on the right, where we have increased the speed. And this causes the molecules to move much faster. So increased temperature increases speed decreases temperature, decreases speed. This works evenly since these are all considered the same molecules. So no heavier or lighter gases in this scenario. Real gases will tend to deviate from the kinetic molecular theory in two specific ways. 
first, real gases do actually have attractive forces and repulsive forces between them. And real gases will deviate from the kinetic molecular theory at extremely high pressures and very low temperatures, such as absolute zero. States of matter, such as solids, liquids, and gases, these substances change from one state to another by adding or removing heat. And so in this example, we have a gas where, there, where there's a lot of space between the particles. They're moving around rapidly, randomly, and constantly. And if I wanted to change from a gas back to a liquid, I'd have to remove heat. And so when we click on the liquid button, you'll see the temperature actually drops down, removing heat. This changes it to a liquid where the particles are now closer together and if we hit solid we remove heat again and the particles become arranged again as in a solid pattern. If we add heat such as clicking on solid, I'm sorry, if we add heat such as clicking on liquid then we'll notice the temperature gauge is going to increase and then we'll end up melting the solid causing the molecules to be able to flow around one another such as in a liquid. So here the temperature rises, and now our particles can flow around each other relatively easily. If we press gas, then we're going to see that we're going to add more heat, so this will rise. And then the gas particles are now free to move around again as they were in the beginning. So adding heat changes phases from solid liquid to gas. Removing heat changes from gas liquid to solid. It is considered endothermic to add heat and change from solid liquid to gas. It is considered exothermic to remove heat and change from gas liquid to solid.